Brian Springer, welcome. Uh, we have the, you're the airport director for uh, Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport for 11 years, uh, but you've been with, um, with the airport for far longer than that, 10 years as assistant director. Um, and you've seen major changes over that time as the airport grows and Bozeman grows around it. Um, the changes lately uh, have been pretty drastic. Um, Brian, thanks for joining us today. You bet. Appreciate it. Um, how has airline travel been affected from a numbers perspective uh, for you and your team over the past two months? Well, it, uh, it took a very drastic immediate turn, obviously, in March. Uh, you know, I think when we look back at the decision that Taylor made to uh, close the resort back uh, in the middle of March, you know, it was a, it was a shock to the system along with uh, MSU sending students home at spring break. Uh, but it was uh, by far the right decision. It, uh, you know, I think as a community, we need to really thank those people who made those hard decisions then. And even though it meant uh, uh, drastic changes uh, very quickly on a local basis, uh, we were seeing that on a worldwide basis as well. Uh, our traffic in April was about 3.1% of normal. Uh, mm. And that is, is uh, that took us back about 50 years uh, in terms of the passenger mm. traffic to about 1970. Uh, going into May, uh, the good news is, and you know, I think one of the things that we all look for now is any good news is good news. Uh, and so, you know, so far in the month of May, we're tracking uh, probably about eight to 10% of normal. Uh, each week is uh, seeing a, a little bit of an increase and going into the uh, summer and June, uh, I think it'll probably be 15 to 20% of normal by the time we uh, uh, see the June numbers come in. Uh, so it's not gangbusters by any means, but it is a, a slow, steady recovery that uh, uh, I hope continues uh, uh, throughout the year and into next year. Yeah, you know, that's, that is, are certainly tough numbers for April, but it's, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know, things are starting to move in the right direction. Um, let me switch just a little bit, you know, what, what are flights looking like in terms, just for people uh, curious, you know, what are they looking like in terms of PPE for employees and, and for travelers right now? Well, Pretty much uh, all of the airlines uh, now require uh, masks for traveling. I think there, there's one exception is uh, uh, Allegiant where it's still recommended but not required. Uh, many of the airlines, their employees, uh, their uh, customer facing employees are wearing masks. Uh, you know, but honestly, inside the terminal, uh, there's plenty of room for social distancing as well. So, you know, I think we're seeing the evolution of uh, how that will uh, transpire as travel begins to uh, recover. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I had a, a friend um, who had an American Airlines flight booked from LA to Bozeman and it was recently canceled. I was just curious, is that, you know, is that the airline, is that the airports, um, you know, are flights being regularly canceled right now? And if so, you know, are the markets, um, you know, the direct markets to Bozeman or those seeing, uh, are being affected? So what we're seeing right now really is uh, the airlines are retrenching to their single most uh, uh, beneficial market for each individual airline. So for example, uh, uh, Alaska Airlines has drawn their flights to basically just Seattle, uh, Delta just to Salt Lake City, uh, and United just to Denver. Uh, so we're, you know, seeing uh, those, the old primary markets that we would have seen 20 years ago, uh, really for the most part becoming kind of our, our uh, base level of service. Uh, but at the same time, we're seeing some, you know, additional uh, traffic, uh, you know, airlines, uh, you know, Sun Country Airlines is going to start service from Minneapolis on June 3rd. Uh, so that will make up for a little bit of the uh, uh, a void that uh, Delta has in that market. Uh, we will, you know, anticipate uh, Allegiant beginning their Nashville service here on Thursday this week. So there are, you know, hints of things coming up, uh, but in particularly, in particular for like the LA market, uh, you know, there's also the uh, impacts of 
uh, specific markets like California and New York that uh, you know the the market is just quite a bit smaller at the moment that uh, of people that are willing to fly so uh, the non-stop potential will be reduced and we'll probably go back to uh, one-stop service for a while mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely well you know I'm curious, you know, what would you tell somebody looking to take a trip to the south of France or fly to the Caribbean uh, at some point this summer? Um, you know, what are, what are they looking to expect? What, what do you expect will be the mm -hmm. approach? Well, I think, uh, you know, the travel experience is certainly going to be different. Uh, wearing a mask on a, on a long haul flight like that uh, will be uh, different. The food service uh, will be quite limited if uh, even existing. Even the beverage service will be reduced. Uh, the process at the airports uh, probably uh, not all that different than what you've seen before but uh, you know on the other hand uh, concessions in the connecting terminals will be less and I think the the biggest impact will be uh, you know how easy it used to be for people in our area to get all over the world may now involve several connections just because the options are limited throughout the nation and, and the world. You know, from a safety perspective, just to follow up on that, is there much difference, um, you know, in terms of domestic versus international flight at, at this stage? I mean, I'm certainly, certainly there are limitations, but. Uh, you know, really, there's not a lot of difference. Uh, the big difference, I think, is, is uh, when you go overseas, or to other countries, you know, you have that added, uh, you know, complex complexity of how that country is dealing with things. Uh, in some ways, we're we're still kind of dealing with that even within our country, uh, because uh, really the decisions have been delegated down to each governor of every state, mm -hmm. and so you know that also is creating some. Uh, uh, issues and challenges in trying to restart the travel economy is because there are now 50 different uh, levels of, uh, of restrictions. Gotcha. Um, you know, for employees and, and passengers, uh, Brian, at, at Bozeman Airport, uh, you know, are you, are you guys, what, what precautions are you guys taking? Temperatures, um, you, know, you know, what precautions are you guys going for? Well, at, at our airport right now, the inbound passengers are being screened uh, with temperature checks by the National Guard. Uh, we expect that at some point will probably be reduced, uh, especially when the 14-day uh, quarantine is relaxed. Uh, you know, we've got, like many places, the sneeze guards and the additional sanit you know, uh, disinfectant stations and, and uh, social distancing guidelines. Uh, but, you know, when you really look at it, uh, if you're going to get into a, a small tube with a whole bunch of people, it's pretty difficult to be socially distant in that environment as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the other you know, question I had was, you know, regarding Bozeman Airport, are you guys, are, are we at risk? Are you guys at risk of, of losing any flights permanently at this stage? Well, I don't think, uh, you know, that we really know that right now. I think uh, there is a, a strong desire for service to Bozeman. You know, I think we're one of the few airports that, you know, is going to see new service starting here, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, most airports have completely retrenched and are just trying to maintain service. So, you know, I think uh, uh, that's the good news. The bad news is, is, you know, we're only one side of the equation. Uh, the other side is, you know, where the other market is and what the strength of that market is to, you know, an interest into coming to Montana. Uh, so, you know, I, I am optimistic that we will maintain, uh, you know, most of the service that uh, we would have had this summer uh, uh, in future years. But I, I think it's a little bit early to tell, uh, you know, I think the, the other side of the the equation is the airline side. You know, right now we're just hoping that all of the airlines survive uh, because uh, they've been one of the most hard hit industries. Uh, and, you know, when you have 5,000 airplanes parked in the United States right now, uh, that's a significant uh, challenge for the airlines uh, to get through. 
the CARES Act by you know the federal government is giving us some uh, breathing room. Uh, it gave our airport some breathing room. I know that uh, with our airport board, uh, you know we're feeling pretty comfortable that we will withstand this uh, uh, this crisis. Um, and uh, you know even up at Big Sky, you know we have Kevin Kelleher, one of our board members, that uh, uh, you know is obviously. Uh, available for people to talk to as well because it's very, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on, but we'll get through it. And I think in, in essence, uh, we'll come out pretty well on the on the backside. We just don't know how long that will be. Yeah, of course. Everyone's got questions these days and there aren't a whole lot of answers, but, you know, the, the optimism is, is appreciated. Uh, you know, Brian, Wyoming opened entrances to Yellowstone National Park, uh, but approximately 20% of travel to Yellowstone comes through Montana entrances. Um, tell us about uh, the, some of the talks you've been having with officials at Yellowstone. Well, I think, you know, with Yellowstone, the, the key is, is uh, you know, what the state of Montana does for the 14-day quarantine. Uh, that will have to be lifted before we see uh, significant, uh, uh, you know, increases in travel. Uh, that being said, you know, we will have uh, in June, despite us being, you know, really quite a bit less uh, uh, available seats than last year, uh, we're still going to be double what Jackson Hole has. Uh, part of that's because of the size of our community. So we have more uh, ability to support more service. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't anticipate that there will be a sudden rush through Wyoming to, to get to Yellowstone National Park. Uh, but even if we do relax uh, the 14 day quarantine in early June, uh, you know, I think there, like Taylor said, there's still a significant number of people that are going to avoid travel uh, for a while, and uh, you know that's going to mean that this will be a, a, a slow and steady, uh, you know, recovery, and not something that is uh, uh, fast and, and furious. It's that's just not in the cards right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, um, Brian. You know, you you mentioned, you know, Bozeman is only one component of a flight. You know, there needs to be a landing and a taking off. Um, you know, is JetBlue still planning to offer service to Boston? You know, right now they are. Uh, in fact, uh, they're scheduled to start on June 13th. Uh, the, uh, the bookings on that particular flight uh, were exceeding their average, uh, which is quite low right now. Uh, but uh, the challenge is, is, you know, there's still some uh, challenges on the East Coast. Uh, there are also uh, a lot of challenges for JetBlue being able to find the aircraft uh, uh, and crew time to be able to do that, even though they've, you know, with the, the number of parked aircraft, you know, the airlines are trying really hard to fit those schedules in. And uh, as of right now, uh, we're pretty optimistic that they'll start up on uh, June 13th. And again, that's just one more, I think, little small caveat that I think we're going to come through this, uh, you know, fairly well considering the, the situation, but it's not anything that's going to be quickly. Sure, sure, absolutely. Well, Brian, I know you and your team uh, have a lot of work cut out for you. You're doing a great job and, and we really appreciate it. Um, you know, what, you. what else would you like to, to talk to you know, the audience about today? Anything that we haven't touched on? Anything you'd like to bring up? Well, I, I think that, you know, I would, I would guess that Taylor uh, probably would echo this is, you know, we in this travel industry, we end up having a, a crisis, it seems like, uh, on a regular basis, uh, whether it's economic or September 11th. Uh, and this one's by far, bigger and, and harder to deal with than what we've seen before. But, you know, each and every time uh, uh, we've gotten through those crisis, you know, crises and, and uh, uh, you know, come out on the other end eventually stronger, uh, doesn't make it easy going through it. And I don't think any of us ever want to go through this one again. Uh, 
but uh, uh, you know, at the same time, I think if you look back three, uh, three months ago and said that the entire economy of the United States and the world would be pretty much shut down and two months into it, I think we're doing relatively well considering that as a society as, as such, uh, you know, and, but like Taylor said, we need to get the economy going again and do it in a logical step-by-step -step way so that we don't get back into a situation where we have to step back. Yeah, of course. Well, Brian, thank you really for, uh, for all you, all you're doing and, and your team is doing. It's, it's a difficult time, especially for the airline industry. We know that along with another, another um, bunch of, of other industries, but really appreciate what you guys are doing and, and thanks for joining us today. You bet. Thank you very much.